Are you too cheap to pay for storage? Do you find storage too expensive? Can you not afford any more hard drives? Do you just not have any more hard drives? Do you just wish there was a way to get storage from anywhere in the world with no upfront cost? Well, look no further than Ping F. S. That's right, it's a file system that lets you store your data in ping packets. Your data is stored in little packages constantly bouncing back and forth between different hosts on the internet. Let's show you how that works. So you all know what ping is, right? Ping is a command that lets you, let's test the BBC, test the network, right? Very, very useful for debugging, okay? So you can see that the, the default packet size here is 64 bytes, and that's basically the ICMP headers and a bit of, bit of data to make up 64 bytes, right? But you can actually change the size of this with dash ash. So if we do ping dash ash 1000 bbc.com, you see we're now sending 1008 bytes. What's in those extra 1000 bytes we just added? It's basically nonsense, it's just buffers to fill up the packets, right? But what happens if we could put information in those packets? We can have ping commands that run forever. That's what pingfs is doing for us. So yeah, we basically put our files into those packets. We break them up and we put them up into these, these packets that we're sending. But the tool we're going to use to do this is called pingfs, made by Mr. Yarrick here. Thank you very much. And get pingfs, you just git clone it and then run make. It might be in your repos as well, I'm not sure, but that's what I did. You get all this stuff here. How it works is you actually want more latency, so your packets take longer to travel back and forth, which means you can store more packets before they come back to you. So if I was to store it on my LAN, you know, I could probably only store one packet before it bounces back to me. Whereas if I'm storing on a server in Australia, I'm in the UK, I could store so many packets on the wire before they get bounced back to me. The more latency we have, the more data we can store. Yeah, basically our, our packets are gonna be stored on the undersea cables. That's where our data is gonna be stored under the ocean in cables. Right, to use pingfs, you have to create this target's host and put a, a host you wanna ping. I put Hacker News in there because it's in America, which is, well, I didn't know any servers in Australia, even though I've, I've lived there, but I, I, I don't know any. It's, Hacker News has one server in America, so it's good for us. Right, it's pretty high latency here, so, well, it's Reasonably low, but high at the same time. You know, shorter than that, which is 17, right? Right, so to run this command, you, you have to run it as root because it's using fuse file system, which needs root permissions. So sudo pingfs, which is the executable, target host, which is the host, host file with, with we, where we've put hacker news, but you might want to put more servers in there or different ones. Uh, and then the mount point. So I'm storing it in mount, pingfs video, enter. So I mount a file system like this. And then if I switch to my root user, cd to there, right. And we're in this directory now, so that's mounted. Whatever I create in here will now be stored in undersea cables between me and that server in America, right? So let's make a file. Let's make let's make data.txt. So in here we write this is stored in undersea cable. Right, that it does take a while, and you see this has now changed to how much it's bouncing back and forth. So it's bouncing back and forth 301-ish bytes every time it pings. You can basically do that. So this is stored under the ocean in cables, and we can edit this file. We can edit, you know. It's a bit slow, but there we go. Yeah, we can, we can delete things from it. We can, we can do anything. So we can delete this file. So it has support for deletion. Right, and that file's deleted. Yeah, okay, obvious downside. So if I create that file again, so yeah, it exists, cool. Um, if we were to stop this, right? So now all those packets that were bouncing back and forth between the servers, um, they've now Right, the last ping packets come back and forth. Pingfs has stopped, so we're not serving any more ping packets. Those files are lost forever. They are not, no longer being bounced back and forth under the ocean, and they're now lost forever. We can't get them back. Look, they're not here. If we mount it again, we see that there's no files in there, right? So yeah, we've lost all those files. Yeah, so that's pingfs, and that's how you store things under the ocean in ping packets. Um, very cool software. Kind of useless. It's just a cool little tool that shows you what you can do with tools that you use on a daily basis that you never would have thought of doing. Some interesting things that you could use this for, if, if you need some, you're running like an embedded system with very little storage and RAM, and you want to store extra data, you can basically just use this as an arbitrary data buffer, basically. You might be able to do something weird with peer-to-peer -peer networks and seeding torrents and something weird like that. I haven't thought about it too much, but that comes to mind as something you could do with it. Yeah, or just as, a, as a, just as a, like a temporary buffer. Maybe if you're downloading files and you just want to convert them and then send them somewhere else, you can download lots of files just using this as, as a temporary file. So if you ever need temporary file system storage that you might not have on a hard disk or in your RAM, you can do this. If you need temporary temporary file storage, this pretty good tool for it actually. Uh, it's quite slow, so if speed is of the essence, it's not good, but it will get you there. You do need that, that's what you could use. But yeah, interesting tool, 
not much purpose to it. Thought it might interest you people. Peace.